problems, constraints, reform policy and how it can be helped in improving the losses. Now in this session we are discussing some of the IT applications related to the power distribution. Now there are two portions in the power distribution, one is the utilities who are the custodian of the distribution, power distribution system and their management and other side is the consumers. If the consumers are not there certainly nobody will use and therefore the main, main stress for the IT system development is how the power distribution utilities can be benefited and how they can take, how the users are benefited and how both can be linked so that the inf both are benefited. Basically consumer of the electricity is the most important element in the distribution management and it constitutes the link in between the electricity utilities and the revenue utilization. And if the revenue utilization out of the two is the most important, if the consumers are there, if the power distribution system is there and if the revenue is not able to realize, not able to if the utilities are not able to get the revenue used by the revenue on the power used by the consumers and therefore most of the utilities are stressing to implementing IT application on the revenue realization and also to certain areas the how the information about the consumers about the consumer utilization can reach to the utility headquarter. Now some of the consumer, now there are two aspects consumer and consumer applications. Now consumer applications, few of them I listed, there are a lot of consumer applications, consumer indexing is the most important. Consumer database, next, because whatever the information related with consumer, it should be available in some database. Then consumer consumption, consumption of the electricity, connected load, consumer billing, consumer collections, energy audit, NMIS, metering, meter reading methodologies, power distribution planning, load forecasting, load management, asset management and GIS. Now, this red portion areas, metering, meeting, reading methodologies, power decision planning, load forecasting, I will not be covering because this requires complete different uh, time and also detailed uh, discussion. So I will, I will be concentrating on the consumer indexing database and GIS. Now what is consumer indexing? As the name suggests indexing, you have seen the indexing file. Consumer indexing means it is matting of you are putting a tag on the consumers to their respect and this tag refers to their poles, to task performers and feeders. Each consumer you know is a given a unique number and we call it CIN number as a consumer index number. This is used in consumer database and it tells how the consumer is connected to a pole, to a distributed transformer, to a feeder, to a station. For example, if a CI number is given 03041290006, I will just go to next slide. If this is the CI given, it means consumer number is 18. His poll number is 6. His distribution transfer number is 129. His feeder code number is 4. And his station number is 3. It means consumer number, consumer is drawing power is from the station number 3. The feeder number is 4 is running between the station and transformer. Distribution transfer number is 129. And poll number is 006. Now basically this sequence is essential in case there is any problem. In case we want to have the information 
how the co how the consumer is getting in fact all this sequence is required in the database there are so many other parameters but this is the minimum parameter with respect to consumer which is required now the next step is comes comes at the consumer end is the meter again there are so many methodologies so many techniques are available for taking the meter reading there is a manual which is still continuing at 80 percent of the places reading through the hand handle device this is continuing around 25 percent of the places spot billing through the hand handle device then reading through the mri meter reading instrument automatic meter reading radio frequency meters smart cards this is a very minimum use because as the cost is over others and now this topic i am not going to discuss but basically this is another area information which is to be in database regarding consumer its meters and its reading and the payments now for doing this as i discussed in my last lecture there has to be done survey for mapping the network and other assets and survey is to be carried out for mapping the network and other set of the utility all network entities are to be assigned a code numbers code numbers are used for internal linkages with the nearest entity and the consumer with, uh, with other assets the data consumer and network data obtained through the gps survey on the entities and consumers are digitized the data should be overlaid on the satellite imagery as per appropriate scales now the survey data is already available from the few agencies which i discussed in during the last lecture now gis geographical information system which help us in integrating this information now what is gis is a system capable of assembling storing manipulating displaying geographically reference information by integrating from database optimizing data layering and the timely data updates gis is a digital representation of the geo coordinates of the customers now basically your cin consumer consumer index number this was one but now basically where is the consumer located and therefore geo coordinates of the customers all the network elements which are linked with it its attributes important landmarks of the relevant area and these are with a suitable resolution are to be mapped on a or to be digitized and put on the map gis gis help in visualizing the actual network as it is laid down on the ground it is user friendly and provides easy of data entry since the data are digitized certain types of the interactive applications are possible automatic mapping facilities management and network solutions gis provides a flexibility of choosing the other systems so that the information whatever has been collected it can be shared and it can be used in some other applications like network analysis inventory management travel call analysis basically gis provide better comprehension of the entire data which is available now what is required for the gis implementation it is the hardware software data people and the methods used for integrating now there are two components in the gis geometric data which is geographical nature is refers to the, ge the geometry such as location boundary state boundary plot boundary 
building features etc attitude data is the characteristics refers to the information associated with the geometric data such as location name state name nature of the occupation of a plot etc now what are the requirement for the implementation of gis database you require database software that should be open gis practical consortium compliant hardware such as servers for the enterprise wide deployment you require application server and the web server desktops at different user locations you require a lan so that these are connected enterprise wide 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 area network and local area network at different location with proper security and connectivity structuring of the gis data and users this can be divided in two parts one is the geographical data divided into series of the thematical layers locational data which is spatial in nature database in tabular information gis enables the user to visualize the patterns relationships and trends on the various characteristics various attributes you want various items which have been stored and it produces and to visualize layer data set with respect to the, the geography and real world locations on a map now what are the various application use in the power sector gis applications one is the consumer induction asset management location of faults efficient planning of the maintenance effective network augmentation upgradation customer management complaints and the new services which you to do want to introduce gs application used in power sector covering consumers are consumption billing and collection energy audit and mis power duty system planning load forecasting load management carried out accurately with the help of the geo geographical data and past gis convention data available power fill fill phase analysis power consumed by a particular consumer against the load sanction in fact this is also one of the area where some of the load is sanctioned let it be consumer and let it be even utility some of the load has been sanctioned some of the powers which they can consume they are overdrawing the power this is another area which this can be extended information base for every pole its location trace back to the path from consumer up to the feeder and pole level basically in case of the fault analysis this tracing back gis helps it customer billing analysis customer complaint analysis networking network switching the enormous amount of information on electric on electric poles circuit transformer etc can be better organized on a computer system linking database to geographical maps within a relatively short time implementation of gis as decision support system can make the information up to date and accurate gis can effectively manage the spatial and non spatial electricity distribution information as well as information now main advantage of gis is first of all the entire data you can able to put on the map you can have a view of the area you can share the entire information of the dynamic information related to the performance of the network to share the information with other it applications now database in the next area is the database the database and gis integration in gis based consumer database 
the integration is helpful in better customer satisfaction. Bringing transparency, quick decision making in the process, other systems like metering and billing, outage management, asset management, energy audit. Now, another main application which is in the power sector is the SCADA, which is stand for supervising control and data acquisition. It involves networking of a group of substations and especially it is metros and large towns at least 40 percent of the utilities has already implemented. It is a costly affair and it is used for data collection in respect to all the equipment installed at the whole station. It is an effective tool for remote, remote sensing and monitoring of the system parameters. SCADA allows to getting online information SCADA introduces distribution automation in the form of remote monitoring of the unmanned substations. Develops indigenous technology in these areas, but the cases are isolated and sporadic. SCADA introduces distribution automation in the form of remote monitoring unmanned substations. Now, SCADA implementation means monitoring of these stations on real time basis. Investing a huge amount is required if you want to implement the SCADA in a separate control and data equation system. Expertise is required in integration of the network mapping and network analysis software with the SCADA. SCADA will improve operating efficiency and consequently customer satisfaction. Lot of data at a regular time interval the utilities are getting and this data can be downloaded. They can go back in case of there is some problem. SCADA has developed using host of the enabling code technologies related to data communication, centralized and distributed databases, decision support real time computing and power system analysis this is the most important portion which is does. geographical information processing graphics and multimedia distributed process control simulation and forecasting the main constraint encountered in planning is the non availability of the required information at right time to decision makers now any of the IT applications which you are looking at what is required that you should get the timely data to the decision makers but still the constraint which are there the decision makers that they are not getting the right data for example I just like give you like to give an example coordination secretary which is the cabinet secretary takes every week a meeting of the concerned sector for example, let us take a power sector itself, where he called the power secretary. Power data requires coal, therefore coal secretary. Power data requires railways, therefore rail secretary. Power data requires linkage, therefore the CEA. Power secretary requires the monitoring agency MPI, so they are available. And all these agencies when are sitting together, they give a different set of data. And therefore, when five sets of different set of data is available to one person, what decision he should make? So, what is required in the main constraint is that you get an integrated view of the data. Many of the our infrastructure projects and development programs are suffering time over and cost over run because the non availability, non availability of the right decisions to the implementer and therefore the infrastructure setup which I discuss the essential this should be essential there are lot of IT applications which will help in implementing but the infrastructure is the most important 
adopting modern ICT infrastructure tools and the e-governance solutions as we have discussed, this can rescue the system. But what is required here? A proper training on using of the IT applications, how it is to be used, how the information can move. IT, IT usage will help in maintenance of the network details. Carry out the load flow studies, design of the suitable models and efficient and improved performance of the system. Now, if you want to use these tools, you require innovative technologies. You have to accelerate the process of getting timely up to date data and information required for quick decision making in all the electricity boards in the power department, in the corporations for the better planning, for the better monitoring, improving efficiency and financial performance. Due to adoption of the various IT tools, it has now become possible for many utilities to become online with these their subordinate organizations, monitoring various schemes and programs efficiently, reducing the time order and cost run. I just like to give an example. Pool India, which is a 10 subsidiaries, subsidiary companies. They have implemented a coal net program. And these subsidiary companies are linked with the coal fields. With the entire information whatever is happening at the coal fields is available to the coal subsidiary companies and from the coal subsidiary companies this is coming to the coal India and from coal India this is coming to power sector. Now the linkage committee, now the linkage committee which is uh, responsible for, the linkage committee which is responsible for the providing the linkages to the power sector, the information is able to get it. Now, what what I am what I have referred here. Now, this is possible only. This is possible only provided you have a proper infrastructure. You have the proper databases where the information is available, and also you have the tools and training for usage of the system. Now, in these areas, what ministry has done, they set up a different subgroups. In the thermal sector, in the hydro sector, in the power sector, and this thumb group has standardized the information how the information should flow. So they make a thermo thermonet for getting and linking all the information which is required from the thermal power stations, hydro power net for linking the information which is required from hydro power net. Now this database is what are the information has to be put this has been standardized. Now again, you use the IT tools for database development and various procedures for extracting the information. I will just like to now switch over some of the things, some of the information what Ministry of Power what Ministry of Power has done it for improving the information and how the information can be shared. Now they implemented a power net which is a satellite based computer and communication network of the power utilities. 
It covered installation and commissioning of the V sets at the headquarters of the all the duties. They are also standardized, as I told, the information which has to be shared, and these these information on the thermal, hydro, power system, transmission. This formats have been standardized. They have been given, and the information. The headquarters have been linked to the power net. The information what is being submitted two types. One is the information which is required for the monitoring. Other is the highlights on the progress made on the IT implementation by the respective utilities. Now, the utilities which are linked, these are the utilities, there are 26 utilities and all has the same format for putting the data. There are, there are two types of formats, one is what required by the central agencies and, and other is the macro level information which they are maintaining it. Now this is just a view of the power net. All the agencies have been linked and each agency can talk to each other through a satellite based computer communication system. Now this, is, this was the system which was implemented about 8 years before. Now most of the utilization either these P sets have been discontinued because now the cheaper solution is available, you can give it lease lines much cheaper way. And, and the internet is available, any person who is linked with the internet, you can transfer the information. Now this was the connectivity which have been shown from the ministry to the utilities and also they have a dual connection, in fact they have a radio frequency link, so that in case sometimes satellite link fails, so they can do it. Now central processing unit of the Department of Power, there are 10 and they all have a very high speed database, database high speed uh, B sets connectivity and they have uh, implemented CPSU net, again they are linked similar to power net. The information of this is being monitored in the database of the ministry. And the entire information what is available it is being shared by the all the all the organizations or all the citizens they can just ex log into this and they can get the information. For any of the person who want to involve and who want to participate in the power sector based on the policy, tariff policy or the notification or the clarification or the guidelines, entire thing is available here. And these guidelines person can go and then they can decide how they can involve themselves in participating in the power sector of the India. Other information, even the tender information as per the guidelines of the CBC, all of these are putting the tender information on their website now. And this is also made in being available on the NIC website. So now tender information, initiative, is standing committee decisions, profiles, power sector development blueprints and internal conferences, business meet, etc. This is available on through the website. CA, which is the custodian of the data for the power sector. So whatever information they are publishing they are also making available through the website www.ca.nic.in its activities, its publication, power plants, tariffs, status of the various TAC, coal report, generation report, village electrification report, pump set energization. Now some of the put information have been put on the website of the power sector. Availability of the internet has made citizen 
to access the information through web. Now daily and monthly data of all power plants of the country through the NREVs, through the REVs is directly available here and person can see. But basically this is for the planners or the person of the researchers. Such application have facilitated data entry, updating and generation of reports, query from the remote locations. Many applications have been implemented on NICnet server which is freely available and this is being utilized free by the all the organization. But again the data custodian are the utilities. An IC server is just a facility as a facilitator to use the putting the information. Hydro pioneer which I was just saying again all hydro stations of the country all the agencies dealing with the hydro sector the format is standardized and NHVC has been made responsible and they prepared a website application for managing sharing and monitoring the information related to hydro power project. VPN facility authentication is the most important. Now the person who has been made in charge for updating the data again they have been connected through VPN virtual private network. Now only person only only person and only that computer which have been authenticated you will be able to update the information. Therefore VPN facility use to enter data from remote location by concerned organization the concerned apex bodies can be only use the data. Thermal power net is another application which have been made it's a web based application for the thermal projects. There is another important project which is being monitored on a priority basis is RGGY Rajiv Gandhi Government Vidyakarana Yojana is a national program for the rural electrification and cooperation limited is a web based application. Now this application has been made to capture the data on the ground on the villages because the now the definition of the electrification of the villages has changed earlier definition was if the if a line passes over the village then the village is electrified now actual pole has to be there and also you have to see how many households have been electrified and therefore the scheme has been uh, this star program of the RGY has been again started for the rural electrification of the actual household who are in use. Web based application has been made and recently what I understand about 1 lakh village data who are actually electrified have been put and the time target is within 6 months all the village data should be available here on this very soon this uh, website is going to be inaugurated. Now I would just like to give you what is the status of the IT initiative taken in the utilities. Most of the organizations had limited application on IT. Most more business oriented organizations are going to for applying for IT. An observation across the organization is that the approach towards IT has been in very piecemeal with standalone applications deployed for a limited operational requirement. Many applications have been imported for example system planning. At least I know that 10 utilities has procured again they are using for their own purpose they are not sharing the information. So what is you require here? Any application which you require this has to be shared by the all concerned. IIT has been used only as a tool to address the specific issue or two at a time without a long term strategy, long term holistic approach. So whatever approach we are taking it this has to be long term policy has to be looked into it and then it will certainly give a benefit. 
constraints observed in implementing the basic transition are still manual without inbuilt controls. Limited integration of the systems. There is a lot of duplication of the work under utilization of the resources. When you implemented LAN and WAN, it means now you are sharing all the resources. You are putting one printer in one division, it means all the officers are using it. Now that type of process has to be taken out. As terms of the standard architecture or database. Any case, efforts have been done on this one. In a policy guidelines have been laid and the more of the utilities are now going to use this. In a decade, into interface for integrating with the other applications. Applications have been procured and when we are implementing it, then we are finding you are not able to integrate because the interface are not available. These uh, issues has adversely affected the returns from the uh, returns made on the IT investment. A standalone system coverage to the limited geographical areas and this has to be stopped. Systems are in place but it is not being used to the lack of training. This is the most important system is there, computer is there, application is there, but training is not there and therefore still they are going to continuing with the old technology and the new technology also in place. Incoherent technology strategy leads to the situation where incontrollable options are selected and large sum of the money are wasted in attempts to integrate them. The bottom line which I would like to summarize that the business performance has not improved in spite of the availability of the IT applications in lot of places. While Indian IT sector has helped numerous organizations around the world to derive substantial benefit from the application of IT, but in India again we have to change the, the methodology of working and certainly there is a lot of room for IT application within the power sector in India. There is, need, there is a need to look at the global practices in IT applications in the power sector so that the Indian, so the India can benefit from these IT applications. Now the main constraint which was there, the non-availability of the required IT, this is, this is not a constraint now. But certainly the few of the guidelines which Ministry of Power has given, which has been given in implementing and if this is followed, this will certainly improve the things. Thank you. So friends, what Saxena has discussed on the various aspects of the power distribution business and the IT applications. I express my sincere thanks to Dr. R.P. Saxena. I express my sincere thanks to all the learn learners and the viewers of this program. There is an announcement. The next study conference session is on 18th of May, next Sunday, where we will discuss on the management of power distribution and the one topic from the energy management. We wish you all the very best. Good day.